approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything to add? I just uh, want to add, um, if we could put it in the uh, report motions ordinances to add uh, the May board meeting um, schedule. We may have to move a meeting date in May due to the school revote. So. Where do you want to put it? Uh, just put it first, I guess. Mm -hmm. so get it in and get it out of the way. <clears throat> Anybody have anything else? I move we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, public comment. Is anybody here for public comment other than what's on the agenda this evening? Now's the time to bring it up. Okay, hearing none, we move on. Did everybody get the, the stuff from the from Mr. Woodhull? Yes. The letter and okay, good. And then there's some spreadsheets type tables that that were attached to it. Yeah. Okay. Must be John. No, I'm Oscar. Oh, okay. no, okay. they are not here yet. Okay, so they're not here. So we'll. Uh, Spend a little bit of time going to the um, reports, motions, and ordinances. If our appointment for 615 isn't here, if, if for some reason our appointment at 615 doesn't show up at 615, do we care about moving them up? Talk about the water map a little earlier. All right. So the uh, so the May board meeting schedule. Uh, right now we were on for the 13th and the 27th, but the school has decided to do the revote on the 13th. So, even though they probably should have looked out there to see that the select board meeting. And 27th is a holiday too. 20, so we got to move. <laughs> Both of them. 27th is Memorial Day. How about the 6th and the 20th? Yeah, kick everything up. Kick it up a week. Or, or I didn't know if maybe we could just move it to Tuesday. Yeah, either way, well, whatever uh, works. Monday the sixth is, is another is a informational meeting on the school thing, so I think it might. Be, yeah. We have a huge crowd, but they might. They might and the I'm not available on Tuesday, so we'd have to figure somebody else out to do minutes. So we got So it sounds like the six isn't really an option if there's going to be a lot of attention at the school. Mm. You can't do Tuesdays at all. Okay. Seven. Unless so, you move the meeting to seven. Yeah. <laughs> so we went to the seventh. In the twenty-first. In the twentieth. Yeah. I can get Kelly, most likely. I can get somebody to do it. Or oh, I can I'm do sorry. it. Right now we're on, the, yeah, we're, right now we're the 13th and 27th, right? Right, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, if we did move it to just a day later, the 14th and the 28th, we would have to get someone to do meeting, meeting minutes, right? It can be done if you need to. Just personally, the 14th and the 28th are a little better for me. I'm teaching the week, the whole week of the 6th, and I probably wouldn't be able to make a meeting that week. The 14th and the 20th? Uh, <coughs> the 14th and the 28th are better for me, but yeah. that's just, yeah. And it probably worked better for yeah. me as well. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on board? I'm good. I'm good with it. I'm actually, I'm good with anything. Same here. Yeah, it's fine. So it's so hard. So I'll, yeah. I'll arrange it. Yeah, we'll, we'll arrange it. Okay. So, what day did you just? Fourteenth and the twenty-eighth is Tuesday. Okay. So we'll do the fourteenth and the twenty-eighth, which are both Tuesdays. The way that uh, went would have been nice. If, the school seems to always do that to us, where they put a <coughs> or, or they even put their meetings on our minutes too, and it's like mm -hmm. the way they do mm -hmm. that. Yep. You know. 
Ours have been the same forever, but. All right. I think their vote thing is an issue with the days. They had so many days from the time the petition put it in to getting it in. To really get, they wanted to put two informational meetings and get all that done. So I don't think they had much more time than that. Well, we need to show up because we we counted for half of the voters last yeah. time. So if uh, us four don't show up, then we only get four of them. You know? I hope some more people go. I hope so too. But Okay. We all set with that? Yes. Great. And then moving on, we have the constable position. So, um, Mark Bilal had resigned. His last day was, I believe, Saturday or Sunday. Saturday or Sunday. Um, and we advertised for the constable position. And I got two applications. Uh, one is um, from Oscar, who is out in the audience right now. Uh, I think you know, I think you know Mark pretty well. Yes, I do. Uh, been just kind of discussing the position with Mark a little bit, right? Yes. Okay. So the, the two uh, the the two applications are actually in your packet. So uh, the thought was that since we only received two, we talked about just kind of having a discussion about it and seeing uh, which way the board would like to to move. It is a it is an appointed position, but it's kind of a hired person. It's it's a, a weird deal. But uh, the position is actually appointed, but they act they they. Um, are seen as a town employee under my direction and under the personnel policies um, requirements. So, but it is actually an appointed position by the board. Right. So um, I don't know. I didn't ask any of the uh, applicants to be here, but Oscar being Oscar, uh, he decided to show up and uh, and be available. So I wanted to uh, add my train transcripts and a resume to the uh, packet if I could. Uh, I need to call the police academy and ask for my current training transcripts from the uh, from Optimal Justice Training Council. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know if my resume had made it through with the application. No, I just have the application. So if I may, I don't know if I have to ask for those you know. No, I just, I did, yeah, do you want to? Uh, probably just hand it to Greg there. Yeah, and I'll just. Once you have six copies, it. If you just oh, have one, we'll great. just disseminate it and we'll get it put back into the packet after. Um, so yeah, so um, well, here's some so a resume and looks like okay, so some additional information. So we talked about um, just discussing, kind of seeing how many applicants we got, and um, if we had gotten a few, I was going to look through them beforehand and, and sort of review everything and come with you um, with a recommendation. But since we only had two, I thought it would be easier just to have you take a look at the two and, and ask questions and. Um, if we wanted to move forward on either candidate or have them come back and, and interview in front of the board, um, that's that's definitely a, an option. I mean, I, I guess after looking at it, it looks like both candidates are, are well qualified, uh, which is good. To have yeah. A, you know, well qualified candidates. I think last time we had talked about Greg, you sitting down and interviewing. Uh, either by by yourself or having maybe right. one board member sit in with the interview process. So, uh, well, and that's again, we only had I only had two applicants, so I thought it'd be a little bit more because we have a it's a it's an empty position now. Mm -hmm. So the idea just to be maybe move this forward a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. um, have you spoken with the other? No, I haven't. And initially, it was just let's look through it and see if it's if how you want to move forward, if you want to interview both candidates or how you want to do this. Um, I think it'd be good to. Yeah, I would. I would interview both of them, and, um, both Oscar. And so, the does the board not want to be involved with the interviews? Would they rather me do it with with a member and come to you with a recommendation, or do you want to interview them as a board? You should be able to do it all right and recommend to us. Okay, well, I'd like to have a, a board member there, just because it's not always you know one person doing this is. It's not always. Uh, you should always have two people. In yeah. So, are there any board members that would like to? Okay. Um, and I'll I'll get a hold. What's your availability? Um, Pretty well open right now. Um, okay. He started with Killington PD, so. On a part-time basis, right? On a part-time right? basis, yes. Okay. And you were going to take over in Rochester, weren't you? And Did then they decided. 
Yeah, they decided not to do it. They've hired theirs out. Um, and I did check. Um, Windsor County. I, I, I don't want to be speculating. I, I can't it was Windsor County. I talked to Mark about it, and I've got some costs, too, yeah, um, we on what it was going to. It's going to cost him $60 an hour <coughs> plus 66, $60 an hour plus 60 cents a mile for Windsor County. Um, so that is another option, but, but that's what they decided to do. Yeah. So that kind of throws a loop into some of our, our cost sharing that we have with them. Now we're going to be bearing more of the brunt of yeah. that. But, but the other um, thing we talked about looking at was the whole structure of the, of the constable position, you know, making sure that we have a good understanding of uh, who, who does what when, and, you know, because there seemed to have been some confusion in the past. Um, about well, some of the items. I, I think it's a good opportunity for us to sit down and maybe create a job description yeah. uh, because you statutorily there are certain uh, things that he does, but there are also other things that the board can either omit or add to it mm -hmm. if they feel the need to do that. So it might be a good opportunity to, to sit down and really find out what we want this position to look like. And then maybe we could talk to Trevor too. Uh, yeah. From, uh, yeah. ATCU maybe. Yeah. So in the meantime, I will uh, um, set up interviews with uh, let me know. Mo and I. Yeah, we'll set up an interview um, probably within the next two weeks. I'd like to get something back to you before the next meeting, mm -hmm. which has been what well, moved. Uh, just moved today. So. Um, so the idea is to come back before us on the 14th with a recommendation. Right. And then. Right. We also, I like, believe, as a board, wanted to get information in regards to what the Windsor County shares. Cost would be versus what we currently have in our budget. Just yeah, and it all it, again is sixty bucks an hour plus well, sixty six a mile. Haul for them to go over to Rochester. Uh, I say it's quite a haul for them to go over to Rochester to work. So maybe it wouldn't be as expensive coming here. I don't know. It'd still be sixty cents a mile. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. But it'd be helpful to have that comparison. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mo, I'll get in touch with you after I get the candidates. Um, I'm good whenever you're ready. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Good good night. Night. Thank, you. thank you. Don't go over that mountain, Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go up it in a car right now either, right now. I think I'm going to go the Yeah, go the other way around. It's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Right, see you. Thank you. So, just a sidebar on. Um, on Oscar, he's the one that he puts together our software too. So that software that that, Mo, that Mark has been using, he put together. So, um, all right, Mo, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So is the, the vehicle back here? Uh, it will be real soon. Yeah, we're still trying to do the transition, get it kind of finished up with Mark. Uh, he finished up uh, Sunday, so was that yesterday? He finished up, and I, I don't think he's had a chance to bring it back yet, but he will, and we'll take a look at it, make sure everything's good to go whenever we get it back. We got to get his keys and all that stuff too, so it's been a little busy, so I haven't really had a chance, but. Just a little. Use the cruiser as your replacement vehicle for the week. That is not a bad idea. Yeah. Just learn how to use the blue light. <laughs> oh, I know. And then the woo woo is on top. I can get. I can do all that. Yeah. That's a good idea, actually. Um, okay. So um, John is now here. Mr. Woodhull is here. So. Any further conversation in regards to the constable? I guess the only thing I would say is, um, is there any way before you do your interview you can have the have revised job description done? Um, ideally, we would have to, but it's going to be a cart for the horse kind of thing because it's, it's probably well, going to be approved by the board before. Yeah. I mean, there are core, there are core things that he's allowed, that he's supposed to do, you know, traffic and things like that. Um, but then there are additional things that we can add. Now, we both have a pretty extensive uh, education training. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Didn't we last year kind of do a? We did. A, a job description of, yeah. of Mark. Because Mark was, we were having some issue with kind of exactly right. what he was supposed to do, right. and, and the discussion was do mostly traffic. Right. That was the idea that he was going to probably spend the majority of his time doing that. Now. 
to today's point, this these other these two other candidates have, could probably do a heck of a lot more than that. Um, and maybe that's something we want to look at. Maybe initially we just look at it as the basic stuff. He's, you know, the dog, he'll have to be the dog person and they'll have, this person will have to do traffic stops and they've got a little bit of DUI enforcement that they're allowed to do. And that's really the, the biggest part that they're allowed to do you now. And maybe we just grow that as the position starts. But I think to if you keep it as a wide range under the constable position, then you or us, we can target certain things that we want right but if you know if, if we change the whole job description then we could potentially get in a situation where we want to do something we have done in the past and, and, and the, the issue is we don't even have a job description you know the job description is actually statutory right. um, but it does say in there that that the board has the, can take the liberty to either remove or add some tasks based off of and it also based, it's, it's, it's also based off of the the training that they have if they have police training then they can do more police type stuff, uh, whereas we didn't have that before. Uh, so some of that is gonna be dictated by, by the education and training that these people have. So I would expect with the, now, now that Mark is done, that some of the equipment that we have purchased will be coming back from Mark as well. Yeah, yep. Um, and I don't know how that goes about. Well, know, and see, that's why it's gonna get a little tricky because Rochester, things like that. we split a lot of it with Rochester. Yeah. The computer and the, some of the software and some of the other things was split and they are actually liquidating. They're getting rid of the position and they're selling off all their stuff, everything. So it's gonna be a little tricky to figure out how that dynamic's gonna work and who has what, who owns what, because there was this weird three-way thing and now that's gone too because Mark is actually gonna stay five hours a week or whatever it is in Granville mm -hmm. and Rochester got rid of theirs. So now, it's, now Bethel is by themselves in this whole deal. So we'll have to figure out, we may have to purchase a computer because I know that Rochester purchased the computer and we were paying for part of the software for it. Maybe you can buy him out on it. Well, this guy here, if, if you decide to get him, he's got computers. I'm sure they all have computers that they could probably use. I'm sure we can work a deal with them. I mean, uh, well, that's the thing. they use for nothing, well, it's probably. Well, that's the thing. Rochester is going to be liquidating their stuff. So the thought is that we go to them and say, look, it we need it. You want to get rid of it? Yeah, exactly. Cents on the dollar. I mean, I might, they have cruisers. They have a brand new speed sign that they just got. Those, those type you move around, brand spanking new that we might be able to. Go and see. Yeah. What we may be able to get some items for. Well, Randolph probably got some equipment left over. They, too. I think they get rid of a bunch of they, everything too, yeah, right? Yeah. Whenever they closed out. Oh, the yeah. cruisers. I, I noticed today their cruisers were still there. Are they? Yeah. they? They still say Randolph on yeah. them. So. And it seems to be the trend to go into this, having the sheriff do it, and that's something that we can look at. But we're again, we're looking at sixty dollars an hour. Yeah. Well, I can uh, tell you in Randolph, it hasn't been very favorable. Really, it comes down to the, no. a lot of people that live in Randolph are, are not okay with. Are they not getting the coverage that they want? Well, I mean, you don't get the as personal yeah. touch in the community. You know, you have an identity that comes in and enforces what they want. Right. You know, and they had a very good police chief that yeah. left. They, they had a presence around the yeah. well, I mean, rough, if you just think about it roughly, we're looking at over there. Mark was 20 hours a week. So $60, so that's $1,200 a, a week, plus the mileage he probably put on, I don't know, 100 miles maybe in a week, probably half of that, but 100 miles. So what is that, another $60? So, you know, if you're looking plus at benefits. That in, I don't think that includes all of that because they're subbed out. Oh, them. Oh, them, them. Yes, yes. On top of this. Right. Well, we can, and that's what I'll bring to you next time is, is a breakout of here's our budget for the constable. This is what we paid for benefits, blah, 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 blah. What does that equate to in hours, basically? Do we have retirement this year? We did. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Do we have track of, of training programs that we paid for and things like that? Cause that? That's what I was talking about the nuts and bolts of who's paying for training and certification. And, like before, we were splitting it three ways. Sometimes we would go in three ways. Sometimes we weren't. Well, uh, you know. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, we could probably we find it. I don't know how we would recuperate it. Caught. I mean, it's in his head. It's not, you know. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. They purchased a computer, so we should. You know, it would make sense that they would be willing to sell it to us. We were just paying a third of the software on that computer, um, so we actually were getting a pretty decent deal. But if this goes away, there's going to be some hardware that we have to buy and probably some software too, unless we can get with Rochester and they'll, they'll deal with us. Okay. All right. So I'll bring that back. Anything further? Great.
And where is 615 appointment is here. John, everybody got um, the information in their packet? And I think if, you know, maybe the start, what would be easiest for the board, or at least for me, because uh, I've read a couple different versions of what has been submitted and still trying to narrow it down 100% here on. You know, could you, could you briefly kind of summarize the... Um, I can, I believe. Um, I apologize, first of all, for some of the false starts, but this has been complicated, and we've been really trying to get accurate figures to come to. This is something we've been working on. You know, really since we purchased the property in 2011, and um, it's just got to where we need to go. We need, need to come to an agreement of what our charges are accurately. We're not disputing paying accurate charges. You know, we just want to find out what they are and get them on a monthly payment, auto pay schedule, just like we do our our, our, land, our, our property taxes. Um, First of all, the, uh, when we talk about vacancy, we're talking about uh, a, a, an apartment that has no use, no kitchen, no bathroom. It's been it's been gutted out. We put new electrical in, put new plumbing in. We took the lead windows out. We placed them to safe, safe, efficient windows, new heating system. Um, so we're not talking about built, you know, units that we just haven't bothered to rent. These are, you know. When we're talking about vacancy, we're talking about uninhabitable, uninhabitable, unrentable. Un you know. mm -hmm. uh, and what we, we the, the figure that we came up with for over the eight years, I don't know if it's the, the, the uh, total overcharges page on the, we put on both the twenty three and the two fifty nine. We added them up at. $5,774.47. This doesn't include the interest that we were charged on from um, charges that were not accurate, in other words, that we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we've been paying this all these years, and we didn't know this. Um, what we would like to do is mm -hmm. from May 1st, fresh, scratch. We owe less than this, this figure here by almost a thousand dollars. I don't want to quibble about it. I just, like I said, my goal, Bali's goal, is to start fresh and with what an, an operating. Um, we were both in agreement of what's what's happening. So we try to give you. you know, So that does change that schedule a little bit. So that we put out for later, October, um, November, depending on what I really can. Um, I was out in the woods for three weeks after I had my knee replaced. That's great news. I'm, nobody will give me any information. They keep talking about how you need to be active. And then the guy turned to me, the search attorney, and says, not you. You have to take it easy because I have something going to start. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's different. So. I get more I get more injured in the woods than I do. So, um, so kind of the back up here. So we have, um, you know, just to make sure that we're all on the same um, point here with the board. It's, there's two properties. There's, there's 23, which is 23 River Street, and, and 259, which is 259 River Street. 23 River Street has two units in it. No, it has one unit. Well, 
I think originally it said it had two units, but one was. Well, originally what we were going to do was put a second apartment in on the other side and then do something downstairs. But at $200 a month, we're not sure we can make that work. So we're just sort of sticking with one unit. What I'd like to do is if we can figure out what we can do, what math works out. And I'm talking about breaking the even. I'm trying to be out of the red. I'm not talking about money to go to Cancun or something. I mean, I'm, so we're just trying to, you know, break even. That's truly the case here. I haven't, we, we don't do vacations. We don't go anywhere. My vehicles are falling apart. I would just like to get a foothold. That's all I'm asking. Um. It would be nice, I mean, eventually it would be nice to get a second unit downstairs, get something going down upstairs. There would be income producing. Uh, but we've completely abandoned the idea of a second apartment upstairs. Because I mean, I understand that this, this water sewer situation is, it's fluid. I mean, if, if our expenses could increase from here. I mean, I know got a lot of issues with the water so. so can I interject for a second? Sure. Um, so I had a discussion with Polly, who is the, the owner, the other owner, um, and what we kind of discussed was, was if you look on her spreadsheet, and it's, it's a page that has, says difference between occupancy and charges to date. Um, so what, what the, and tell me if I'm wrong, John, if I'm out of line or if I say something that's not correct, but what she's contending is that multiple times over the years, they had different occupancy rates within that building. And they came in to the town and said, I have three vacants and two active. Or two months later, they came in and said, I have five rented, whatever. And expected to get the billing changed because it's a five EU. So let's go back to the EU idea. It's a five EU. And it was always billed at a five EU from day one. At the time, we were giving partial vacancy rates within a multi-unit building that was vacant partially. We have some others on here on the street that there's evidence that it could be four units and it would say one is empty for a quarter. That person would tell us it's empty for a quarter and they would give her a or that person a vacancy for that one unit until it was occupied. Um, what Polly and John have been telling me is that they were doing basically the same thing over the last few years on this five unit complex. There were times when it was vacant, times whenever some of the units were, some were not. And they were asking for those changes to be made and they were not being made. Um, so I asked for evidence of these changes and they couldn't provide me anything other than Polly went back and actually found all the electric bills and I didn't add that in here because it's a stack that deep, but the electric bills, basically when the vacant, when the unit became vacant, it reverted back to the owners. And so they went to that and, and that's where she came up with these numbers of how many vacant units were in the building during these dates. And so what I think part of what, what John and, and Paul are asking for is to um, get reimbursed for that, those times when there were partial vacancies. And that's what this sheet says, so you've got, uh, amount charged based on five units, and so that's the EU5 and how much it is, the, the, the rate times five. And then the next one is overcharged. So what she's saying is, is that there were two units empty, so, so like 9-15-2011 should have been five, or three charged at full rate and two charged at vacancy rate. So that's what this table sort of is outlining. Uh, if, now, again, I don't have proof that they came in every quarter or every two months and said, I've got three vacant. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking their word for it. There, there was a survey at the town. Yeah, an annual survey. We filled those out every year. And then when we got the response as in our bill, we would go in and explain how this wasn't lining up with the survey, trying to get to, once again, trying to get to the bottom of it, trying to come up with a solution of how it is that you're charging so that we understand what we're being charged. I mean, it's a simple, straightforward business. And uh, we usually go in a couple times a year and then we kind of give up on it but because we weren't getting anywhere. I mean, you see, you see a credit, you know, after we go in of $200 for some reason, which we weren't quite sure of. And then the next overly 
it would be ten months. So we sort of back to where we were. None of those surveys were ever passed. I guess so. The reason this really can't be found. Yeah, those disappeared. It occurred to us to make copies of it. Yeah, I can't find any of our surveys before 2017. But that was our, you know, that was that was our interaction with the town, and um, it's just gotten to a point now where we really need to we need to come to some understanding. And and I, I will say we've had a lot better luck because Greg's a lot more communicative than us. So, so I think we've got two issues we're dealing with. We've got the, the back billing part of this, which is what I just discussed, and then we've got moving forward. Um, and I think what John is asking for and Paul are asking for moving forward is you've got a unit that's that's vacant. It's it's not inhabitable at this point. I think what you're asking for, <laughs> the fifth unit. And because our vacancy rate now says that the whole building has to be vacant, it doesn't wouldn't apply. So what they're asking for, I think, is that that one unit not be charged because it's uninhabitable, but we charge the other four as we normally would for whatever. I don't know if you put in your letter what that date might be when you think that thing might be get, might be well, I rented. Wasn't even, I wasn't even addressing the go forward part. Of okay. So I'm much more concerned Sorry. about the past charges and the overcharges. And then as far as going forward goes, we're willing to We're willing to do whatever it is that the town wants to do. I'm not going to fight the town about what you were, you know, what you want to do. I guess that thing is 60%. Is that what it is right now? 60%? It's a, uh, no, it's more than that. It's roughly, I think, roughly 80, 75, 80, something like that. So, for, a, for a unit that's completely unrentable. Well, no, for a building. So that's where it's a little tricky right now. The ordinance actually says that for, in order for a building to be considered vacant and go on the vacancy rate, the entire building has to be empty because we shut the water off. You haven't got that luxury. So what Paul and I, and I think you were in that conversation, talked about was a partial vacancy, uh, which the board would have to give, because I can't do it based on my ordinance, but it'd be a partial vacancy for the one unit for whatever time was determined. Or, well, if we were, if or we were going to address that as well, and what I would do is my partial vacancy rate. Right, so that's a secondary to the other. Realistically, trying to calculate in the the knee surgery, I thought September originally, but now the knee surgery would be a little bit later than that. Um, you know, I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to accept whatever you guys are willing to do. Um, as far as 23 goes, it's a little trickier because it's, it's, we were really shocked that the rate was actually $200 a month for a unit, and that, actually makes the math unworkable for us so that we don't know what to do with that building. Um, right, so we just, right. we just don't know what to do. We're, so that's why I'd rather just try to sort out the, the past issue first and then see if it's so, so quick. Do you mind if I? No. Uh, so I, th I feel like maybe because I think one of the things, and we've now been through this two or three times, <clears throat> excuse me, um, one of the things that might make this easier is if we just, let's set two, the 23 River Street aside for a sec because it's totally different. And the more confusing one, which is where we started, was the 259 River Street. And this is the first time that I felt like I could wrap my brain around it. So I appreciate, and I, I believe it was probably Polly who put these spreadsheets together, right? Oh, this, this, is the this, this, was the, this was the time where it sort of all, it, it all came together and I could actually see what was trying to be communicated the first few times that was there but it was it was muddled in a lot of detail um, and so I'm gonna try to reiterate and see if I can if I'm getting where you're going with this is you were charged the full amount for units that were totally uninhabitable and at that time the town should have been crediting you for well, the town shouldn't have been charging you the full rate and instead should have been just charging you the $25 vacancy rate and what you're asking for is to account for all of those fully vacant units that were charged a full rate for that overcharge to be credited back minus what the $25 vacancy rate would have been per each unit, right? I believe that's how she came to the figures that she has. Is, it, is everybody 
sort of following that at least? I'm, I'm a little confused by this whole paragraph on the first page that says total overcharges and this whole section about um, uh, even if the carrier is 25 uh, per empty unit would owe a total of 142 months. This whole paragraph confuses me because I don't know what she's really driving at with that paragraph. Well, so I think that's the piece that's saying here are the total number of months, and it's it's unfortunate that it's being done in months, and we work on quarters, and so sussing out that piece of it is one whole. But what is element. that? So she's saying she actually has. She's looking at the quarters that on that other spreadsheet. She's looking at how many units were vacant mm -hmm. for however many quarters. Right. So she's adding the, the cumulative quarters together and saying that each one of those should have been a twenty-five dollar credit. So the number on the side, the forty-eight. Yeah. That is the total amount she's saying was overcharged. They were charged for units that were vacant. So it's what they were charged minus the... And um, then that number that's in the paragraph right. is what she's acknowledging should be taken off the 4800 because that's what the town should have charged. Okay. So what they should have paid was the $25, $25 vacant, vacancy rate per quarter, per mm -hmm. however many units. Right. And that's that number in that paragraph. And the, the full amount that was charged and she's calling an overcharge is the 4,800. Mm -hmm. So it's the 40, it would ultimately be the 4,800 okay. minus the right. 1183, but then there was, there was the $200 credit that the town gave, so minus mm -hmm. that. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I guess my, my take on this is I can see, I can see now where, where these numbers are coming from in a more clear way than before. Um, the piece that I didn't feel like I had clarity on and I wanted to ask, but I wanted to make sure I was understanding this correctly, is um, you're, you're currently in the rears on water sewer, is that correct? Do you know that amount? Or do you know that amount? It's, uh, it's around $4,100 a $4,100, okay. And that's with uh, penalties and interest as well. Okay. And so re realistically, if... But that's on because both buildings. That's the. Uh, that's that's, that's a total. What the breakdown is. Okay, so it's a little harder sure. to just talk about. But that's what I'm saying. If you put the two buildings. Because <clears throat> if we took out the amount, if we took out the amount that should have been charged from the town on the overcharge, you you come up to, well, so I'm I'm recognizing my calculations I did earlier today are a little off because. Um, because I wasn't accounting for the two hundred dollar credit, but you you come out to a, about eleven hundred that that should have been charged, but would now be subtracted from the overcharge. And so I believe it's, that this forty eight hundred is after she's um, that was the that was the final figure after the math after the twenty five. After yeah, she's got 983 that the town definitely owes us. Mm. And how much would be a 4730 quarters? 983, that's so if you if the bottom spreadsheet, if that's what you're looking at, that calculates correctly with the number of units that are empty that you guys are reporting empty. That 4,800 is exactly what that would have been, but doesn't include what should have been charged as the vacancy rate, which is the $25 okay, per well, unit. I'll, I'll accept, I'll accept what you're saying. So, so that's, I, th I think that was the piece that was confusing before uh, that I felt like I finally got. And, it, and this spreadsheet helped that because the math works out. It is accurate to what the overcharge was, and then her paragraph in the two spreadsheets up um, is acknowledging the you know, what frankly, should have been charged. Should be here, but right. right, I know, and, and and I know this is just it's no, she's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's confusing. She just couldn't. She can do the math, but she didn't want to be here. I mean, the, the tough thing is where I mean the the board members here, anyways. I mean. Mo and I are the two oldest sitting board members of three, four years, and and um, I mean, so we have, you know, we obviously want to work with you, um, 
just like we're working with other uh, building owners, you know, in around the downtown um, that are looking at, you know, refurbishing buildings and, and trying to get units up to date. The, the challenging thing that I have is, is you know, that there's no backup on either end of the town or or you well, as owners. That's to, why we went to the electric bills because we were right. to pay electricity on these units when they were being rented. So when you, when you have a, if you, you know, I believe they charge you if you're not, you can't just turn it off and get nothing. You're gonna have to. You know, it's not well, I, yeah. I'm not sure. I understand the electric bill and the things. I'm using electricity to as a town. Let's, let's say if things were, were working the way it should have been working, right? Once a year, you get a questionnaire, and based on the questionnaire, you know, at that time, at that time, you say uh, we have, you know, four of the five are are rentable or are being rented, and, and at that cool. time, and at that time, you look for a reprieve on one unit to be put into the calculation. Now, now, it's tough because we've looked back and there can't find any documented evidence of either or, um, other than we do see every once in a while that there were adjustments made to the account for, you know, for amounts. And that was that, as I said, that whole process of right. we would fill in the survey, we would get a reaction to the survey, so then we would go in and we would get the credit and then the following bill take it off or something like that. And it was just would, it was just very frustrating. So we were very busy, a lot going on. So we didn't just sit there and fight. We had a lot of other things to, to, to deal with. But now it's just gotten to the point where it's critical. I mean if we don't you know if we don't come to some resolution here we're you know we're done. We so just, we can't and, and I just wanna I just want to get all the information out there. So the way I see it is is you know or the, or the way that we should charge or not charge people is based upon the questionnaire, right? So the questionnaire is filled out. That then tells the updated uh, units that are available to be rented. Um, and, then, and then we make adjustments at the town level based upon that. Um, and, and this is not a month by month case. So if you had a tenant for three months and then all of a sudden you didn't have a tenant for four months and then you had a tenant for Five months know, after that, I wouldn't, wouldn't be making adjustments back that and forth. That's, that's, to me, that's the yeah. issue. Um, and, and, it, and it's tough because we don't, again, we don't have any documents to go back on. To, you know, did you actually make calls? Did we actually not do what we said we were going to do, and vice versa? Um, and then I, I think that the biggest thing that sticks with me is I've been on the board for three, four years. And this is the first time that I've heard of this. So because I've never taken it this level, because we were, right. like I said, we had a lot of other things going on. We just tried to muddle through and get get by. It's now gotten to the point where it's critical, and so we now have had to make this decision and to show up here and try to, to, to sort it out. Again, not saying that we don't want to work with you on this. Also, coming from my doubling, doubling in those three years, the, the charges have uh, like tripled. Right? Oh, yeah. I so, mean, you know, the town and, and, and we can deal with the, the, the right. charges. But now we, can't, now we can't afford it. Well, the so, problem was in the town of Bethel for a very long time is is we were not covering the cost of our water system. And every other town identity in the area or the state were covering and we weren't. And, I know, understand that. I understand and we took advantage of it for a long time. So now we're actually putting our water rates where that cost, you know, that cover our cost of our system, which is our next appointment that we're talking about, you know, upgrades to the water system. Um, so I guess for me, I have, I am <coughs> trying to wrap my head around this is, to, you know, separate your two, you know, two things is how do we take care of or do we take care of the past? And how do we help you move forward? Um, I think if you, you know you help me by moving forward by taking care of the past. That's why I say well, I don't want to I don't want to pass out the, 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 the future. I will take whatever you guys are charging. You know, I'm not asking for anything. I'm not I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm just asking right. that the town right the ongoing wrong that occurred. And I understand that you're frustrated that you don't have the paperwork 
But I don't believe it's just our paperwork that's missing. I believe, I mean, it's, I'm assuming that nobody can find any of these surveys. Or is it just my support surveys? No, it's from 2000, everything prior to 17. Okay, so, so the town hasn't kept the survey, so it isn't really. But the survey was an annual survey. It, it was done once a year, and, and there, if you look, if you look at the spreadsheet, there were adjustments that were made probably because, like you said, you, you didn't get anything from your survey, so you came in and you asked them to make adjustments. Was, so that was an annual roughly once annual a year, there were adjustments made. So, uh, okay. I, I think that, you know, the thing for the board that we have to take into consideration is that we don't want to start new precedents on anything to do with the water system. So precedents in the past has been you know, if there is proof of an overcharge or an undercharge or however it went, then we have made those corrections. Um, if, if we get into doing partials or partial reimbursements or partial, you know, other payments, then we can get ourselves and open up a can of worms that we have to go down with every other business owner, you know, in the town. So we have to be very careful on that. Um, you know, right now, what we, as the board, over the last two years, what we've done is, you know, we have, um, you know, s stuck to our precedents, which is, you know, um, one, we're going back and we are collecting past water uh, or utility bills. So, um, you know, maybe some of this has spurred from that. I mean, we sent out some really, you know, kind of nasty mailers saying, we, you know, at this point, you get to pay up or else. Um, but at the same time, we've set a precedence with the board here as well that we're willing to work with everybody in the downtown business owners going forward. And we've shown that to date on by having individuals come in on a case-by-case -case basis and, and in some cases giving them some reprieve on their water and sewer while they are making um, modifications to their buildings. So, you know, we have to be kind of careful on how we do that. Um, it, it's a it's a tough one because none of us were here. The past administration or two isn't here. Um, all I can speak on is the last three or four years that I've been. If the past administration was here, I wouldn't be here because I wouldn't get anywhere. I wasn't getting anywhere when I was going in there. I mean, I hope we had to take care of this when we started trying to seven, six, seven years ago. You know, and we've been there every year pretty much since. I do have, you say there's no bill work, I do have electric bills. I wouldn't pay electric bills on, on apartments that were not using. I mean, they were not, they were not, that somebody else is in. You know, I mean, there is, you do have some paperwork that says that they were, um, I'm going to have to infer it because of the electric bills, but I mean, it's, it's all we've got. Right, because like I said, I never really it didn't occur to me that I would need to copy, make copies of these surveys that were sent in. But I mean, even if I did that, you could say, well, you have a copy of it, but I would know you sent it in. I mean, at some point, there has to be some things that either you think I'm wrong or not. I mean, we, we really suffered. We really worked hard to. I guess I think these these uh, figures. This is like Holly's fifth iteration on, on trying to get the best anchor figures we could. And we did them, we came in, we tried to work with them to see if you know, our figures were correct, in other words, in terms of the billing. And, you know, because it's, it's complicated, it isn't just a straightforward billing chart necessarily. And so we tried to figure all this stuff out. And it changed a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. So we really did our best to try to come up with accurate figures. We spent a lot of time doing it. Right. And so which probably could be here. So the bottom line figure is the fifty-seven seventy-four, or is there a takeaway that has to have uh, the presentation amount of twenty-five dollars? That's probably where you should be. Yeah. Well, what we need to figure out is the overcharge and then applying the $25 credit. And so the $25 credit, if you take um, the total. You know, 
No, I'm not going to say not to interrupt you because I'm going to Sure. But I think right now as the board, the numbers right now don't mean anything. We have to establish the precedence of the case mm -hmm. and not the numbers associated with it. So regardless if the number is a dollar or if it's $10,000, right now we have to establish as the board the precedence of the case. So if the precedence of the case is that we believe that the town was in the wrong, then we can start to talk about the numbers. You know, we can talk about the numbers all we want, but if we don't believe that the town was in the wrong or, or you know, or whatnot, uh, you know, we're just chasing numbers here and, and not getting anywhere. And, and, it, and we're in a very, we're in a tough situation because we have, you know, we don't know what other administrations did. All I know is what I've done since I've been on the board. I will say that since I've been on the board, I have not heard anything on this case. And as long as Greg has been an administrator in this town, he has not heard anything on this case. Not to say that this wasn't happening, but we also have to understand that there are other accounts that are outstanding in this town that if we set a new precedence by this board, we could, this wouldn't stop anybody else from coming in and saying that they should have been credited on this. We have to be careful. And I think as a board, I don't think we can settle the number issue tonight, but I think what we need to talk about is the presence of the case. I mean, if, if any of you feel that I've overstepped or you don't agree, I mean, feel free to, to you know, to chime in. But it, and, it, and it's, it's a tough, you know, because, you know, the compassionate part of me wants to say, yes, I mean, we want to make sure that you are a thriving uh, own, a building owner of two units and we want to work with you. The other part of us has to say responsibly is, you know, at, at, at the town, how do we move forward with this uh, and protect, you know, everything as a whole. So, Dave, what's your comment on that? Well, I, I agree. If, if, the, if the, the business owner has been wrong, we should it would be great to take care of it. The problem is, we have no idea what kind of can of worms that would open. How many, I mean, because we have no, we don't have those surveys, we have no idea what, we don't even know what could come out of this. Well, and, and I will reiterate, I, I didn't give you um, our spreadsheets from our software, I gave it to you weeks ago, um, but there, there were annual adjustments being made, annually, um, here and there. So, for instance, um, on the, the five unit, they we made an adjustment. So we were always charging for five EUs. Uh -huh. So, um, well, a number five, just remember the five. That may have been a combination of vacancy and occupied. Um, so like, for instance, in July of 15, we went from a, a charging for all five EUs as occupied, to we went to one vacancy and four occupied. And then that stayed for a little while until February of 16, when it went to, no, sorry. Um, went that way until August of 16, we went two vacancy and three occupied. And then it stayed like that for a while, um, not very long actually, until the next month or the next quarter My when it went straight to five occupied. So there were some adjustments being made, but not nearly what, what John. I don't know what, what our spreadsheets show, but the, what my confusion was not just what you said on May 2016, they showed a credit of fifty dollars for two empties, but the next quarter, or the next several quarters, had apparently, uh, according to this spreadsheet, the same units empty, but we didn't continue the fifty dollar credit. I mean, did they did they come in and say they were fully ready at that time? I don't, I, that's my confusion. Is okay. the town or Holly's spreadsheet shows that they they did it? And then the next quarter, it would be the same situation. Right, uh, and, right. And the so town, the town, because right. uh, I have, it's, um, if anybody has it, the 325 packet is what has this, the town spreadsheet in it. Yeah. And I have that it's up. It's got my scribbles to the side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I spent a decent amount of time trying to figure this out because it's been, it's been racking my brain the last couple of times we've dealt with it. And I, I agree with you, Chris, that we are potentially opening a can of worms, but I also, 
the more I dove into this, the more I feel like that the town wasn't wasn't really doing its diligence to, you know, the taxpayer and in this case the water sewer payer that they were coming in and, and clearly getting a credit here and there and then it would immediately revert. It's like almost like the credit was just given, but the system kept saying, oh, this is the full amount. And so that just kept getting spit back out. And then when the bill would get put through, right. it would be the full amount instead of including the credit. And it, it, at least that's what it looks like. I think the, well, the, the piece that sort of in response to the question you posed, which was, you know, what what is the precedent we're setting? I think the counter question to that is, if the town were taken to court over this, would we have a leg to stand on? And I, after today, I didn't feel this way the last time we talked, but after today, I'm not entirely sure we would. I think that there's enough evidence here, and they've proven their, their case in a strong enough way that it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be in our hands and in our court. And right now it is in our court, and we have an opportunity to work with them. They're in the rears in a relatively similar amount to what they're saying has been overcharged, and we have an opportunity to work this out peaceably. And I think that's that's where the board, you know, that's sort of what the board is meant to do, is, is work with people and, um, I don't know, I think I, I think there's a resolution in here somewhere and it's gonna take a little more Greg, what was your checking the numbers. Uh, June of, uh, what are we in, 19, 18, June of 17. So since June of 17, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six quarters, according to this sheet, that have been billed incorrectly. Have you received a questionnaire from the owners in your time that you've been here? I don't think we did, did we? Did you give us one last year? I don't remember seeing one, but. Now, I, I do see that since you've been here, out of those, we did one quarter, uh, February of 2018, we did make a $50 credit. But all the rest of them were at zeros. And, and the only reason why I say that is because the overcharge amounts are, are still the same, if not higher, since Greg's been here than through the last nine years or eight years? Well, yeah, up until um, August of 18, and that's when we did our ordinance change, and that's why everything reverted to the full EU, mm -hmm. and there were no partial vacancies. Because uh, the, the way they did it, the way it was done in the past is there were partial vacancies per given, even though our ordinance didn't allow for it, that was done until that ordinance change that we did. But I mean, that's just the way I'm kind of trying to put my head around this is, you know, a, um, a larger percentage of the money that they are looking for is in the last six to eight quarters that you've been here. Not putting this on you, just saying, just observing this, right. you know. Well, and, and we'd want to look at when we uh, changed the vacancy, because I, I think it wouldn't, we'd have to not include that, and I think right that's, now it that's is. That's August of 18, July of 18. July. That's when the ordinance was passed that stops the, that, that defined right. what the vacancy was. Right. <coughs> When was the ordinance passed? When? 2000, July of 18. 2018. Right. So. so the so the August and November of 18 ones that are on here would not apply right. to begin with. Well, so right. I think we're just looking at where the town right where where the town overcharged and wasn't just charging the vacancy rate and was charging the full EUs for the units. Paul, do you have anything? I'm caught in the horns of the dilemma, as I'm, and I think that there was probably some lack of record keeping on the part of the town. Certainly we should have had those those surveys and whatnot. It should have been proper documentation of you coming in, you know, and setting trying to set things right. 
but I'm also looking at, you know, what, where do we go from here? I mean, if we say, okay, well, we're going to, you know, well, we wipe out here. Your, if we can up. continue, we can, you know, get those five units going. That's going to be a decent income for the, for the water and sewer. And, um, and it'll be right away, rather than us going through a bankruptcy and winding up at some point. We can get our feet on the ground. We can finish 23, and we get a couple of units going there. That's what, you know, that's what the outcome of this would be. If we can, you know, if we can survive this. No. I'm totally confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I agree with what you said, though. We. We've got to be careful on what we do because we could set a president that uh, could open a can of worms. I mean, it, it's just confusing to look at, like, you know, secondhand the because there's, was, you know, there's, was made by the town, not by us. That's you know, there's because there is a time. The town now, the town. Because if you look at the the history of the account from September of 2011 until May of 2015, you know, nothing was changed on the account. You, you know, whatever, you bought the buildings was set up and that was the way it was. Right, and we, we tried and then to in, change it every year. We and in August, August of 15, basically until August of 16, for a year period, there was credits that were generated through the town to the account. And then, then pretty much since Greg's been here, there's been an account, well, there's one, there was one month where there was some credits made to it, but have been, you know, run basically like it was the first four years. So, I, you know, it's, I don't know. It, it's, it, it's not as easy to say who, who's at fault or who, who talked to who, or who didn't talk to who, or who talked to who that didn't make a credit, or, you know. You know, we don't have a history of being in the I'm, I'm assuming you have, because the, these spreadsheets are saying you have actually have documentation to back this up as far as what the bills were. And, so on and so forth. I think that's what town bills? Yeah. That's what Greg sent yeah. us or was in the packet a few weeks ago. Yeah, we've got yeah, do you remember I didn't reset it, it was these spreadsheets that was uh, yeah, I understand but I don't this here. What I where it's going with that is if, if he has documentation that proves all the things he's showing us and unfortunately we can't Right. There were no notes put into our software. Um, there were no notes anywhere. So that's why we reverted to the idea of the utility bills to show when it was vacant and when it was not vacant. Because I, I have no notes. I have nothing. Nothing. But yeah, and it's, it's just, I mean, even if it was vacant, it doesn't necessarily mean that this town was notified. You know, I mean, there, there's just so many we, we, ways we, to look at this. We, we, were we, we did let them know. I came in and let them know things as I would expect to do now. I tried to get the town to come look at the building. I couldn't get them to come in and see the building. I took pictures on my phone to show them what was going on. When they didn't want to come look at the buildings, which I understood that they needed. Um, so, Greg, do we know what the what the number is of, of the amount that your area is at this point, including? You don't have. A, I think it's over four thousand dollars. Okay. And I don't know what part of that is actual and what part of that is funders. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to calculate. I don't know. I don't know. Because we'll have to. I mean, we'd have to just figure out. She's done some of the math here, it looks like. So 47 quarters at 25, you know, there's a credit there, but we need to figure out, and maybe I'm missing it here, but. 
So why don't we do this? I mean, it just doesn't sound like that we're going to get to a, a conclusion on the dollar figure tonight. Unless I'm missing this. And, and if anything, if anything, I would recommend that the board would, would entertain an executive session to be added to tonight to talk about um, this, um, as there's always the opportunity here for litigation. So um, I would say based on the past account, you know, we should discuss that through an executive session um, to be added. The, the members are all good with that. Yeah, I'm wondering if that might be more fruitful if we, not wanting to delay this more, but having full information, so knowing what the full, what the actual numbers are of what they're in the rear, what's the difference with interest, if that, if that conversation might be Part of the better served uh, to be had because I, I do I do agree with you, Chris, that this might be best to do an executive session. So why don't we why don't we add an executive session uh, to talk about this as the board after our personnel matter one this evening, and then if there's any further information that is sought by the board at that time, we'll ask for that and, and we'll follow up. Um, but I think we probably can move forward if you're prepared with anything futuristic. What, you know, what's going on with the buildings? What do you need help with? Um, you know, what do things look like? I know you had mentioned that the the 23 River Street property that you know the the intent really was to do to, you know have two identities there. Was, uh, two apartments upstairs and then uh, turns them to the business downstairs. I would hope for our business, but right. Things are all sort of leaning on each other. So, you know, if you don't get one thing solved, you don't get the next thing done. And that's kind of where, where we are. So, um, I, I just can't commit right now to what 23 is. 259, we're definitely going to get the fifth apartment done. And that will be squared away. And um, I think then. When do you think you'll have that other apartment? I know with. You know, with, with your uh, health I and would, stuff, when are you I thinking? My original assessment was September, but now I think it's probably going to be November would be more realistic. So if you said the end of the year in the, in the letter? The end of the year would be great, but as I said, I, I, don't, I don't want to complicate this issue by talking about, I figure that you're, you guys are going to do whatever the new ordinance says according to the usage. Well, what I'm, what I'm alluding at here is you're still in the process of refurbishing these buildings. And it's yes. We're mostly done. I mean, and and it, well, I guess what I'm getting at is what we have done with a, a couple of other individuals in the town that have e either recently purchased property or had purchased property that they're now starting to renovate is we have given them some reprieve as long as we know what the parameters of their uh, design is. So, that would be great. so in this case, you know, what I'm but I'm thinking that we need a formal, you know, a formal written proposal. But, you know, it sounds like on the 259 River Street property that, that if you could get the board a formal proposal of, of asking for reprieve on one EU, which is one unit, between, um, what would be the last two, two quarters, of this year, then you wouldn't have to pay. Uh, you wouldn't have to pay the. Uh, well, right now you don't qualify for uh, for the um, the vacancy rate. Well, we have to pay the four thousand dollars. The, but, the balance of, of the past. Then we'll be finishing that part. We just don't have that to do it right now. <coughs> but I guess what I'm getting at is if you have that. if you have some. Based on what the, he's currently paying, he's paying five units worth. On, on 23, he's paying for two units. Right? Yeah, five on, on 259 River Street and two on 23. So I guess what my proposal would be, trying to help you out here, is to ask the, the board of water here a formal proposal on waiving the one, one unit on 259 for the remainder of the year. And then I would do the same on one unit on 23 River Street.
for the remainder of the year. What that will do is that will give you some reprieve on, you know, you know, two hundred dollars a quarter for two quarters on each one of those. So that's eight hundred dollars. And at that time, it sounds like chances are you'll probably have the two fifty nine River Street one completed, and it'll be ready to collect uh, revenue. And then what this does is it gives you some thinking time on the 23 River Street on what do you want to do there. And you might say, you know, we're going to go ahead and, and do what we want to do, or you're going to say it doesn't make any sense. And maybe you, uh, you know, pull some of the water out of, you know, shut some of the water off to the place to make it a one, you know. Well, there's not, there's not a shut off. There's no, no, but we can take that from a two EU to a one EU. In that building. Is that as long as there are certain parameters are done inside the building. Is that building empty or completely empty? No, it's just a warehouse. Right, but nobody's living in there, there's no businesses in there, there's nothing going on. There's one apartment upstairs, that's right. Okay, so it would be one of you. So yeah. we could go in, yeah, you, we can go in and so you change can, that to a one What are you saying? Yeah, you can. Uh, those would all be great. That which would, would save you money. Those would be great things, they'd be very helpful. So, um, I mean, those are the things that. If we, don't, if we don't pass, if we don't get over the first hurdle, Right. The second part is, is Well, I, I mean, I'm, you know, hopeful that we can get through the pass hurdle in one way or another, you know, and the board's going to talk about that and, you know, an executive session, but there's probably some options for you. Yeah, uh, if that's, even if that's not giving money back, there's probably options that we can, we can do as a town to help you through this process. So I really, really appreciate that. And I, I appreciate you guys spending so much time on this issue. I know it's, I know this the time tonight is not the only right. time we spent on this. It's a, it's a mess, and I'm, we've made our, we've done our best to try to make it mm -hmm. as messy as possible. But. So why don't why don't uh, why don't you follow up with Greg? Uh, one, I, I believe Greg, you can go out and assess the 23 River Street property, and we could reclassify that as a one EU. No, because the uh, listers have it as a as a two. They have it as a commercial property, I believe, commercial and residential, right? They have it as a mixed use. The listers do, and that's what we're building, basing our building off of, partially. So, what would have to be done there to to change that? It would have to become through the listers or whomever. It'd have to become a one, either an all business or a single family dwelling. Well, In the meantime, you as the water commissioners can. Give them a right. reprieve on their second EU for whatever duration that needs to be. It doesn't change the classification. It doesn't change the classification at all. We just essentially lose the one EU, forgive the one EU for however long you need to. So why don't why don't you work with Greg and Therese in the office to give the board a written proposal on giving you reprieve um, for the last two quarters of this year for both water and sewer one unit on the 259 River Street and one unit on the 23 River Street property. And that should that should give you enough time to finish up your 259 River Street property. And in the 23 River Street, that'll give you some time to figure out what you want to do with that property. And if we do need to get the listers in there, you know, to look at that property. Well, that's, 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 that's up to you, though. You. Two units, then we're going to do whatever it's been listed to do. Right. But right. say, don't you know, he might just leave it as a, you know, you could just leave it as a rental. If, right? if it's already two units, you know, I'm not sure how it changes. You know, I, yeah, it's as simple as possible for everybody. Yeah, involved. I don't know how the listers, I don't know what the process is for the listers to re, to change the designation from a, a mixed use to a He'd a have to single appeal family. it, I believe, right? Yeah. You know, we'd have to have a, a BCA meeting. On a, on but if you have the listers get involved, they can, they can give him the information which but I don't know that you want to go to a single EU on that unit. Well, no, I mean, no. ideally, want to do something with it. I'd like to make enough money so I could pay. Yeah. Or he could and or have a business. Or, what I'm saying is, if you if you do the proposal from now to the end of the year, that'll give you some time to figure out what you want to do. Because if you came back to us, say in January, and said, "Hey, the 259 River Street property is a go. We're good. You know." We're getting our first tenant, or or we're advertising for it, and then you know he said, you know, 23 River Street. This is what we want to do with it, but it's going to take us another year. 
then you just give us another proposal and we can look at that. Well, to help the you. minute the 259 last unit is done, I'll be in Craig's office. Right. Um, you know, so, Greg, you, show it. Mm -hmm. you yeah. understand what I'm looking at? I got you. So, you would just get with um, Greg and Therese on that and then let the board, we'll, we'll start talking about the back water um, issues that we have there and, and uh, see what we can do on that for you. But, well, be great, right? but we appreciate you coming in and it's not an easy thing, especially when there's, you know, most of us only have a portion of the information and, uh, you know, it's, it becomes well, very challenging. Well, you know, it's like I said, I wish Paula would be here, but she just, she's got high hopes up and just insulating her. But again, either way, we, we want to work with you. So uh, this is not a case of that we don't want to work with you. It's not the town saying we just want your money. You know, we do want to work with you. So one way or another, however this shapes out, you know, well, the options. Well, we really should be an asset for that. So. Right. So, I appreciate your time. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Be in touch. I told you guys to show up at 7.20, right? <laughs> now it really comes down to the guys that are going to take all the window out of our sales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we um, finally have a, a water master plan. It's been done into the state, revised, you know, all the notes are corrected and we're ready to move forward. Does everyone read through this yet? No, yeah, I haven't, given, I haven't given them pages. the full document. We all got it. I, uh, I was <laughs> reading through it this weekend, but I didn't dare print out the whole 259 pages. So. Uh, do you want to sit up here? Or is where we are? Yeah, easiest for you. Whatever you want. It's kind of dark. <coughs> dark in here. Everything's on. So did it's because the sun. Did a little bit of the dense version of the report? Yeah. All right. I figured that would, that's the meat and potatoes of the report, and I'd keep out the, the fluff a little bit. But, uh, you know, going back, we uh, started working with the town on the water. Can you guys introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, for sorry. Yeah. Nathan Fion, Alderman Elliott. Yeah, Alderman Elliott. Um, so we started working with the town on the water in 2016. We began the uh, asset management plan. Um, through a grant through the Drinking Water Groundwater Protection Division. And then once that was finalized, we sort of moved into the next step, which was the hydraulic analysis and master plan. Um, the scope of that was you know, go through the existing conditions, evaluate the water system, both storage, the, the source, uh, the distribution system, look at everything, um, look at the tank, storage tank evaluation specifically as there were uh, identified issues with the boulevard storage tank. Um, evaluate improvements and then come up with a recommended and improvement plan. Um, so that was the scope of, of the hydraulic analysis and master plan. Uh, there was a few things that were um, key aspects or key uh, criteria that we wanted to evaluate as part of that. One, the boulevard storage tank, as I mentioned, uh, that was identified as a uh, deficiency in your permit to operate in 2017 due to the uh, tank integrity. Um, and that was also identified in the Boulevard storage tank inspection in 2016 where there was spalling cracking identified in the uh, roof of the dome. Um, so that was a key aspect. Other things that were identified in the 2017 permit to operate was inadequate distribution system pressure, um, daily chlorine residual sampling points, uh, tank and alarm controls or uh, level and alarm controls in the storage tanks, and then also system flushing plant. Um, so some of that we've worked through and has been identified in the uh, hydraulic master plan of those deficiencies and they've been uh, categorized in what our recommended plan is. And the recommended plan breaks it into smaller segments of capital improvements, uh, projects that are funded through your capital um, on a yearly basis. There's a base project we can show and then there's short and long terms. Um, so this whole report is more of a, a guide or a path for you to follow as you move forward. I'm not saying everything's going to be done this instant, but it gives you the pro projects to work through if capital becomes available or bonds fall off or you find some money or the needs become more pressing as you have weeks in say one section of the distribution system that's occurring you know year after year after year that might push one of those projects up a year or two based on where we have it in the schedule. Um, so in the hydraulic analysis, master plan, we 
we took a lot of the information that we had from the asset management grant and put this into a hydraulic model and evaluated the system based on what's there currently. Uh, so we have pipe sizes, the volume of the storage tanks, your wells, and we show that and go through different scenarios to say, can this uh, line provide 500 gallons per minute at 20 PSI residual per the water supply rules? Um, is there high unaccounted for water based on what the number of users are? Uh, other situations are, you know, does the water line appear to be uh, aging based on what the C factor of friction loss is? So we go through all that information and scenarios and hydraulic analysis, um, and that really is the backbone of where some of our improvements or recommendations come from. Uh, other things we look at, not just uh, the flow, but you know, static pressures. Are there areas within the system that can't uh, maintain 35 psi static pressure? Um, is there, based on the history that the town has, are there areas where you're seeing a lot of breaks on a regular occurrence, and should these lines be replaced rather than spending X amount every time that there's a break on that line? So those are the things that we evaluate as part of the distribution system, um, hydraulic analysis and master plan. Um, so getting into sort of the, the nitty gritty of it, um, looking right on page one, the executive summary, um, Full of our storage tank. It was the, the big ticket item when we started this. The concerns with that were structurally deficient. Um, there was a potential for uh, infiltration through the, the cracks. Um, and there wasn't much documentation from previously about the storage tank. Um, we did some research um, following the inspection in 2016 and reached out to um, some of the regional resources. And the documents that we uncovered were that the uh, dome had actually been overlaid with three inches of reinforced concrete in 2001, um, which didn't alleviate the problem, but I think uh, helped to stress that maybe it wasn't a uh, immediate concern. Um, we do have on the schedule for 2019, we've been working with Greg and Tim to re-inspect the tank, have someone come in with a uh, camera, Robotics do another inspection and really dive into those cracks that they saw in the room to understand if it's a something that needs to be addressed immediately. And if it does, what are what are the costs to do that, and what are their recommendations for that improvement to identify it? Um, so, I'm not saying you're, you're out of the, the fire yet with that, but I think you know based on the existing documentation, there was concerns with the the dome in 2001. Hence why they put an overlay on it at three inches uh, previously. So there's approximately, I think, five to six inches of concrete on that dome now um, in total. Other deficiencies that were identified, and I'm going to jump back now into uh, page four. Actually, let me back up. Uh, starting on page two, the capital improvements. Um, so we had identified under the <coughs> asset management plan the recommendation to replace uh, one hydrant per year to try and stay on top of that and not just let things linger. Um, the town actually budgets for two per year, so they're being more proactive per year, you'd be more proactive than that. Um, the other recommendation in capital improvements was to address the sampling stations that were discussed in the 2017 permit to operate. Um, so the town uh, planning to put two new sampling hydrants in close to each of your sources, so the Boulevard and the Geico um, wells. So that'll help. Right now the town's taking samples out of their uh, closest available uh, house to do the uh, chlorine residuals. These flushing or these sampling hydrants will allow them to take it as close as possible to your disinfection pipe to get the most accurate information on what your chlorine residuals are as it enters the system before your first uh, service. Um, so that's included in the capital improvements. The base project, we have uh, two items identified under the base project. The first is the Main Street water line replacement. So pretty much from River Street to uh, this bridge here, the main downtown area. There's two main water mains um, within that section. One's a, a galvanized pipe. And the other is a uh, six-inch steel slash asbestos uh, cement pipe. Uh, documentation is a little bit uh, varying on what the actual pipe is, but there's two mains running down Main Street on uh, this section, and 
it's unknown which house is serviced off of which main. So the objective of this project is to consolidate into one main, know where all the services are coming off, and also uh, limit or minimize uh, your unaccounted for water that's been a big source along Main Street. There's been documentation um, through the years of leaks occurring. So I'll pull this up a little bit so everyone can see. It also provides just sorry, um, additional valving in the right positions so that if we have a water main break or something, we can isolate that section as opposed to shutting half the town. Down. So what you always hear from operators is there's never enough valves in the system. So whenever we have an intersection, a T, there'll be three valves. So you can uh, isolate different areas um, better than you can now where you may have to chase your tail back towards the reservoir to shut out or shut off sections of the water lines um, just to address one one leak. Um, so it's hard to see in this slide, but uh, talking about River Street all the way back to uh, it actually goes just past where we are now towards uh, Bethel Mills. Yeah. Um, so that's the, yeah, the Main Street project. Bethel Mills to the fish. Yep. Um, yeah. So that's project number one, as I mentioned, replacing two mains with one. It'll also help with unaccounted for water and leaks, but also help hydraulically as um, your storage tanks, your boulevard storage tanks, right off of Main Street up on the hill back here. And then you've got the Geico storage tank, which is out behind uh, GW Plastics in the, in the schools. So that main street's a main link between those two, so it can provide strong fire flow between both areas. Um, and then the second key project, uh, well also, before we move on to that, we're also looking at uh, including what's under the short term, but uh, in long term, but spurs off of Main Street, so Cushing Drive, Livery Stable, evaluating those as we're going right by them with Main Street to incorporate those into the, the base project. Um, if it comes to it that it's just not economical, to make too much for the town to chew off at this time, what we do is make uh, contingencies plans for the town to place those after the fact. So we leave an eight inch valve with a cap on it and reduce down to what the existing main is. Um, so that's the recommended project. And then the other is the level controls um, and alarms at both storage tanks. So back in, I think it was the late 90s, and early 2000s, they tried to use uh, solar power for the level controls. Um, and that didn't, wasn't reliable. Um, they weren't able to uh, energize those consistently to provide accurate level control. So what we're doing is looking to install primary power up to one of the storage tanks to be the primary level controls as both tanks operate on the same hydraulic grade line, the water levels are the same elevation, and then utilize solar power at the other uh, storage tank just as backup if for some reason that primary power at one of the tanks is uh, malfunctioning, we can rely on the solar power as backup at that time. And this is good from an operational standpoint, as now you're not over pumping the system. Right now you're just running off of runtime on the pump. Now you're just running the pumps to fill up the tanks. Once it hits that high level, it shuts off. And they also be called upon if there's a uh, fire during the middle of the night, the pumps will come on once it hits a low level of water. Um, so it's a good operational addition to the system. Any questions so far? Um, so I got one question. Yeah. Did you do you know the elevations of the two tanks? Approximate elevations. Why I say that is I I was told that there's enough difference so that you better make sure you've got the high tank and the low tank level on the level control because they're they are not equal. They're not equal in dimensions. I think you're correct on that, but the max operating line, to the best of my knowledge, is about 530 feet above mean sea level. Um, you know, one's a rectangular tank and one's a, a circular tank. Um, so they both got the same volume, but they have different dimensions. Understood. I mean, at 530 feet, will they both be the same distance from the from overflow? Are they both are they both top elevation, five to five hundred thirty feet? Yeah, both of the top water level elevation is five thirty. So they run an equilibrium. Yeah. Okay. They're not operating off at different levels. They should be the same based on the record counts that we've seen. 
And so the tanks are, well, I think what you're saying is the tank may not be quite as full, but they're That's running off the same level. Yeah. yeah. They're running off the same elevation. If you pump the highest tank full, the lowest tank will be running over. That should not happen. They're operating off the same levels. So well, what may have happened? They're running happen. off the timer as they are now. You've got no level control. Correct. Right. Which is why we're doing a telemetry system. To so what may happen in some case project um, and also have a funding application prepared for review next Tuesday. That'll be May 14th. It's a Tuesday. Can you give me a brief description of what it is you're going to present? So the engineering service agreement, there'll be a scope outlining what our fee and the services will provide in the preliminary engineering report. And that has to all be reviewed and approved by the state. Uh, and then there's a separate application as well. But you're waiting on my financials for that. Yeah. Yeah. No other questions? We'll uh, call our presentation. You get the other agenda items. <laughs> That's all the fun for the day. <laughs> water, water. Now, yep. Let's go. We're not going to know what to do with this all the time. All the fun. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Say goodbye. You're leaving. Yeah, this is my, my last day. We are in the president's hands after this. <laughs> you won't be Thank far away, I'm sure. I won't be far. Yeah. If anyone has any yeah. questions, I, I can be a call via phone. Well, good luck in the new gig. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it has been. I appreciate yeah. working with you and Tim for the past couple of years. Yeah. It's gone well. You're great, and you've been very proactive on both the water and the sewer. So. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll get to that as soon as I can. Yeah. 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 Been a little busy lately, but yeah. we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right. See ya. All right. So we'll follow up the water with the flood updates. Might as well take the H2O. Yeah, that's water right. Water, water. Uh, water, water. <laughs> water, water. Um, right. So I just want to give kudos to everybody that's been helping us out. We've had contractors out there, um, all of my guys, people of town have been really understanding. It's it's gone. I think it's gone as well as it could have gone, to be honest with you. Um, so I don't know. I'm just going to give you a, kind of a brief synopsis, and I'm sure you already know a lot of this, but we had uh, extensive damage on Camp Brook that was probably the worst hit road in, in town. Um, we lost um, considerable amounts of, of the ditches have eroded away, a lot of undermining of the asphalt almost to the center line in some spots. Um, as of today, all of those, those areas have been put back. There's no asphalt, of course, but the, the, the undermining and all the bad areas have been put back um, with material that, that meets the, the federal regulations. Uh, really, it's the state regulations, but um, and we're just working on sort of some, some ditch work now, some cleanup work, a couple culverts up on that road. Uh, that road is a uh, federal, it's funded through federal highway dollars. So um, I met with the state who are actually the, they are the stewards of those federal dollars, um, Chris Bump, and he said, go for it. So we have, we've been doing it as if it was a, a full blown funded project. Um, we have 180 days from the day they declare, which will, it'll go back to the date of the event. Um, and if we get everything done within a 180 day window, there's a very high chance that it will be funded 100%. So we won't have to pay anything at all out of pocket. We can make that window pretty easily. Uh, we're basically ready to pave at this point. There's some cleanup, but we're real close to paving. Uh, we will definitely bid that out. They're going to require we do that. What um, happens if we don't meet the 180 day? Then we have to, then we have to go through the procurement process. There is some, an 80, 20 split. There's a lot of other stuff. So what would be the liability of the town if we didn't get the, you know? Don't know yet. Advocate, no idea. Would be whatever percentage. So right now, so, so the other parts of town where we're covered by the FEMA, if they declare. Um, so let's go to that part. So that's, that's Camp Brook. So Camp Brook remains closed, but open to local traffic only. Um, and thank you to everybody that was out there flagging for us. Um, it was much appreciated. 
Um, we had gotten flaggers out there that didn't do, you guys did a better job than they did, but, um, but thank you anyway. Um, as far as everything else, uh, we, Teresa and I talked with the state who again, are, we're kind of working through the state to get to the FEMA. Uh, and they, have, they basically said Monday to just do the minimum. And we're talking everything besides Camp Brook now. Um, just do the minimum to get the roads passable for first responders and people to get out and then basically leave the rest. We asked the question point blank, does that mean we have to leave everything else the way it is? And they said, yes. So if you hear anybody rumbling about it, that's why it is the way it is. Um, we, we made it passable and then we have to leave it the way that it is so that the, the feds, when they come out, they will look at it and they will do their own assessment and begin the funding part of it. So what happens if currently we have the road passable, mm -hmm. but is not to specifications? And let's say we have another storm that wipes out. It's a whole nother event. So I have had to go through. Because the, the tough thing is, is maybe the reason why the road gets washed out the second time is because we have to specifications sure. because they're not allowing mm -hmm. us to get there. We asked that question and they said, yeah. we asked that question and they said, use your judgment. That's what they said. So that means I can put the ditches back. That means I can put all the ditches back and they can come out and say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the, that's this fence that we're, we're balancing on. Um, so you're, you're exactly right. So just to, to aid in that potential issue, I inventoried everything last week and got it exactly the way it was come Friday afternoon. And I got pictures and I got everything. So just in case it hit again, cause I was expecting it to hit again Saturday, it would, it would, you know, cause they're going to create, they're going to ca call it another event. They don't run together. Uh, so I think we're covered. If it happens again, I've got enough documentation and, and we can, we'll be okay. Um, so I just got a, uh, a message today that the state is going to be meeting with the emergency managers and everybody on Wednesday. And we're assuming that means that the FEMA people will be here. So the way the process works is the state has to ask and request that FEMA come out and do a, an analysis of the, of the damage. Um, that usually takes a week to two weeks before their people will come out and they'll do their thing. We're hoping that means Wednesday they're going to be here or at least next week. Uh, they come out, they, their technicians do the analysis, they look at everything, and then they have up to, I think it's six weeks to do a declaration. Um, once the declaration is in place, we can then start our procurement process and get our contractors or multiple contractors out to do the repairs. So that's, that's what we're waiting on. The bad part of it is, is that the conditions of the roads could stay the way that they are for up to two months. It could be two months or more by the time we get a contractor and get everything else. So we're, we're doing the best we can. We're keeping the roads the best we can. If there's areas that we see that, that become issues, we'll fill them, we'll fix them. Um, but, but you know, they're not pretty. They're not pretty at all. Uh, but the chance that we take is if we decide that we've got areas where the road bed sits four foot higher than the bottom of the ditch now, because the ditch is gone. So if we repair that, which we probably should be doing, there's a high likelihood, or there is at least a, a chance that the feds will say, there's nothing wrong with this. But if, you're, but if you're looking at a dangerous situation. I, I understand you know, that. Somebody could. Use your best judgment. That's what I was told. But this is what happened when we were at Irene as well, is, you know, the town did a fair amount of work in some cases that. They didn't get reimbursed. Said, Whoa, wait a minute. Right. There's no evidence this is damaged. Why do we, why are we paying for it? So it's really, a, it's a, it's a catch to, I mean, it is, it's a catch 22. It's an issue. How much do you actually do? And we have had to do some, we've had to do some road bed. Of course, we've had to do some bridges. The bridges are, are impassable. Of course you got to fix them. So, um, and we've documented all that and, and the state uh, hydraulic engineer has been with me for some of that. So they're aware of that. Um, well, just thinking back to two rivers, it was quite an extensive discussion we had at that breakfast about that was the talk of the town that day because of everybody was coming out of it. And the fellow there uh, suggested, just he said, just pretend FEMA doesn't exist. What would you do to that road to make it safe? And then let then FEMA, and then you deal with FEMA later. Was was their advice from two two rivers? From the word, from the horse's mouth, I said, does that mean we need to leave the ditches open? And they said, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. But then they said, use your best judgment. Yeah. Yeah. So which way do we go with it? So meanwhile, back at the ranch, the contractors that you've had up there, McCall's and, and mm -hmm. everybody that's chipped in up there, 
How do they get paid? How's the town? They're it's not all reimbursed. Wait. They're not going to wait six months. It's all reimbursed. So everything's reimbursed. So we have so been. We have to borrow money. Teresa has been working with, uh, and I actually you haven't seen this, but I just put this together. This is my uh, my evaluation of each road of, of an estimate of damage, um, and it comes up to. This is a very rough estimate. So just so you know, we had roughly 20 roads that were damaged, and this includes um, a bridge replacement in all of Camp Brook. Um, we're looking at about 1.1 million in damage, rough estimate for 20 roads. Um, but we would have to pay all this up front. We have to get a loan to pay everybody and we get reimbursed later on. Um, so Teresa has been working with Mascoma um, to get basically a line of credit, um, which we're going to get. They just need some more documentation um, and, and we'll be good to go. So yeah, is what it is. I guess. So, in other words, if it, FEMA is two months before they okay stuff, that cuts into the 180 days, right? So, no. So, it's a little different. FEMA, so think of Camp Brook is totally different from everything else. Okay. Camp Brook is federal. Even though fed, FEMA is federal, it's federal highway money. Okay. So, it's different. And it's actually fantastic because the, ta the state are the stewards of that money. So, the feds have said, get it done. Okay. And then state will reimburse you. So the state's really helping us. There are partners in this, helping us get this done and push this through because they're on the hook for it in a roundabout way, um, which is a good thing because they're, they're saying, so what they're saying is you have 180 days from that, that period. If you get it all done, then we're calling that the emergency response time or whatever tech, it's emergency part. It's bypassing FEMA, in other words. It's not even best bypassing FEMA, it's bypassing the feds in a roundabout way. Yeah. But it's that, that 180 days for Federal Highway is their, that is their emergency time. Okay. Uh, whereas FEMA, it's 72 work hours from the date of the, the right. problem. So we have 72 hours, not hours in a day, but work hours. <laughs> Once that's done, then that's the emergency time. That's over. So it's, it's two different... Things were, it's two different uh, entities that we're working with here. Um, and two different, two, two different totally sets of rules, really, too. So, so you have Camp Brook and then you have everything else. Exactly. And Camp Brook, again, we built it to the standards. That's what that material we were trucking in from Pike. Uh, we built it to the standards and everything. The asphalt will be to the standards. So as long as it's that and it's built right, then it sounds as though it's a, it's a slam dunk. Mm -hmm. It is 100% funded. The FEMA stuff is where it's a, a nightmare, honestly. Um, and... How much like, of that roundabout uh, the 1.1? How much is Camp Brook versus the rest of it? Uh, Camp Brook is roughly again these are rough numbers. Yeah. Uh, Camp Brook is roughly four hundred thousand dollars out of the 1.1. 1 .1. So we're you know forty percent Camp Brook. Yeah, thirty eight per thirty seven percent whatever. Yeah, yep. Uh, and now I will tell you a big part of this cost is a bridge that we have out on Gilead Brook. Um, and I don't remember the name of the road, but it goes to one house. Pinella Bridge. What is it? The Pinella Bridge. Pinella Bridge, yes, sir. Um, that is potentially a $400,000 bridge that goes to one house. It's one road that goes to one house. And you so, a water line for uh, 12 residents or seven. Mm -hmm. So this is another discussion we need to have down the road. Why do we own one bridge for one We've house? got three or four of them like that, that are one little bitty road that goes across the bridge to right. one or two houses. Now let's put it in himself, and then the town took it over. Why did they do that? So that's just some, another discussion for down the road. So there is a potential that potentially that could be four hundred or five hundred thousand dollars, because it may have to the span of that bridge may have to be increased by twenty or thirty feet. That, that maybe not. They may just say put it back like it is. Or there's a, so what happened on that bridge is there's actually the wall. One of the head walls has has moved in, probably three feet or so, two three feet. So that means the footing underneath here is, has either moved with it and undermined or it's broke off. So that, at a minimum, if that just has to be fixed, if FEMA says just fix that and put the deck back on it, that won't be too bad. But if they say that it's bad and that whole bridge needs to come out, then it's, it's a substantial amount of money for one house. That bridge went out from Irene, so it should have been. It's dated 2002. It was brand new in 2002. When yeah. Really? Yeah, and the other bridges we got lucky. It was just the approach up to them. It wasn't the bridge itself. Yeah. They were landlocked. You said Line Bridge, um, Stock Bridge was fixing up there. Line Bridge, I argued with Stock Bridge because they said it was ours, and I said no, it's yours. And finally, they got out there and they fixed it. 
or they got it passable. Yeah, so Lilyville is totally open all the way through now. Okay. It's not pretty, it's not a good drive, but it's, it, you get through. So at this point, our next step is, well, we have two steps right now. On everything that's not camp, we we'll wait for FEMA. We're, we're still working on some of the issues. We've got some culverts to do. We've got some roadbed that's still falling away. So there'll be a continual sort of getting it to where it's well, passable. What happens now that you're outside your... We're not no, outside that. It's 100, 172 working hours. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And some of it's actually the town is doing. So we don't really fall under necessary under that 72 hour thing. Okay. I think it's really for the contractors. And they were on right away, and they worked. I mean, we're probably getting fairly close, but they're going to be done. Close, so. Yeah. And, but but there's not a whole lot left on our back roads, other than mud season now, which we're working on is a whole other nightmare. But um, Camp uh, Camp Bell was the hardest hit out of all of our back roads. It was, it, it took a beating all the way down, all the way down through. And that dry hydrant we just put in last year is torn up too. So we'll have to, that'll be part of our FEMA. It's a um, it's public infrastructure, so it'll be part of that. It better be, should be. <laughs> um, so that's really kind of where we're at. Uh, FEMA, like I said, we're hoping we'll be here on Wednesday. Um, the feds, with that, with the federal highway, I think we're, we're looking good there, I really think. Um, the state's been really good about helping us out with all that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just just moving on. We're going to have to leave some of these roads looking like, looking bad. And I hope people, I mean, we're doing the best we can. But if they're unsafe, we'll definitely fix them. We'll do what we got to do. But they're pretty rough. Well, at least it's open. You know, I mean, Rochester side, we just closed it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we all are also working with the state. Actually, Teresa has been working all day with the state to get um, some of those the the flashers, the big signs. What do you call those things? The big um, big signs, big digital signs at the bottom of Camp Brook that says road closed, because Rochester is starting to work on their side and they're having problems with traffic, just like we did. Um, and I'm not going to pay for flaggers, you know. So. Um, we're hoping to get a big illuminated digital sign that, that'll hopefully keep most of the traffic. Like you see on the interstate. Probably, like yeah. Got you, on the bridge right now. Are you going to put it at the, right. the bottom right. of the, the road or at the top? Yeah, yeah. okay. okay. Gonna drive up. Like the ones they see. <laughs> huh? Like the ones they put at the bottom of the road for the truck. The driver's not there. They're the big trailer mountain, yes. But it'll say, you know, it'll say road closed. Or right now, technically, the road is closed except to local traffic. But, but we're not pleased. It's really, that. Day, it's really no matter what you have up there, there's not right. much you can do. People That's right. are going to continue to do what they want to do. I talked to the boys today out there, and they said traffic was way down. So we're hoping that we've, we've actually been in contact with um, the emergency management people on the GIS end of it, because the GIS is taking people up over the mountain. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping to get that switched around so that when you plunk it in, it says, that's no good. Yeah. You have to go back around. That'll help us a lot. I think. Good luck with that. I know, I know. I guess they won't get done in time. You know? yeah. But it's really opening. Where are they closed on the Rochester end? Where, where about? At the bottom, at the T. At the T. So that's where they had Just signs up to say the road. You have to go up, was it Brook Road? Yeah, they had signs up. Right. They didn't have anybody there. Just People were bypassing it. But around. We've got barricades at the top of the mountain and at the bottom. And then on Watershed. But they're all scooched over and people are doing what they want. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? They're, they're technically trespassing. So if they get in a wreck or hurt themselves, as long as we've done our diligence and put our warning signs up, yeah. if somebody wants to do after that, it's yeah, exactly. I just got to watch our people that are working out there. That's what I'm. But they're just about done. Like I said, Camp Brook ought to be pretty well ready to go by the end of the week. I would say, ready for pavement, and they will. So that's kind of the rundown. If you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to. But it kind of changes day to day, you know, as we get new things pop up. You know, we just had a big sinkhole that popped up on uh, on your road, and that's more, I think, mud season. That's yeah. mud. I mean, the boys are fighting mud season right now because we're still trying to fix up some of the roads from the flooding. Plus, we're trying to get mud season and get some of that stuff taken care of too. So they're running, they're running pretty good. But uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We got good people working around us. So it's good. It's good. All right. That's all I got. This night's been expensive so far. We're adding them up here. Yeah, it's a multi-million dollar night. Should we just adjourn now? <laughs> this includes this includes a 20% contingency also, just so you know. So, may not be that. But again, I'm, I'm totally ballparking here. I put together based on some quantities, but they were really rough quantities. So, and that bridge is a, is a big if, too. 
that may be, hopefully they just say fix the, fix the wall and that turns into maybe $100,000. Well, I mean, a portion of that money that we retired, you know, this past year, you know, I would say, you know, we had a hard time quantifying it, but I would assume that there was three hundred or $400,000 of that money was money from the last Camp Brook Road. Yeah. Um, uh, you're probably right. Of, uh, I think you're right. Well, but we did find a big old ditch. That's an Oklahoma term, big old ditch. That means a big ditch that was plugged up that comes right across Camp, Camp Bell. So all the water coming down Camp Brook goes into a culvert at Camp Bell. And there was a big, a big ditch that it was supposed to continue down the hill. And that was plugged. So all that water got pushed straight out to the road which caused a lot of that erosion up on the top end of Camp Brook. Mm -hmm. So we opened that ditch back up, and I think that's going to help is tremendously. That over at the Camp Bell, was that undersized for the amount of, I mean, amount of water that came off that hill? That was only like an 18-inch. We made it bigger. We made it bigger. It's a 24-inch now. Oh, yeah. We did. Yeah, I talked to the state, and they said that's fine. Yeah. Wouldn't be. And the other one that goes across down at the bottom, there's another one down there, and we're going to upsize it as well. So. Yeah. Well, let's hope we don't have any more. Good times. Those. Last week was fun. It was a great week. Well, at least the weekend. Smashed my truck. Nice, and, you know, I know. I know. I was in Rutland on Saturday, and it was pouring. And I thought we it were in kind trouble. It was more of a soaking rain than it was yeah. a hard. Yeah. Hard. yeah. It was a green up the grass. So if, if anything changes, I'll let you know. Again, the next step is kind of, I think, we, we make sure it's, it's still safe to pass. And we'll continue to monitor that, monitor that and then we wait for... For FEMA to do what FEMA does. All right. And we have fire station award. Yeah. It should say fire station review bid. Could you just take us through quickly? Uh, so sure. The work that to go on there and sure. You know, why we're doing it. So there had been some damage to the fire station years ago before um, me. Uh, on some of the, the uh, exterior siding, there was some damage that was done. As well as there was a, um, David said that there was some sort of a, a material, wood material that they used for trim board back in the day that was a, a bad material. It was known to fail. So it had all rotted out real bad. And then this winter, um, one of my guys were trying, he was trying to clear snow from the edge of the building and he caught he used a loader, and when he picked up, picked up the, the pile of snow, it was actually ice underneath, and it twisted and damaged more of the siding on the outside and actually pushed the walls in. Um, probably no more than an inch or two. Pushed some of those walls inward. And so they're bowed on the inside, and it broke some drywall and possibly the seal plate and some other stuff. Um, so that's where this came from. So um, <laughs> put it out the bid, and it included, uh, there was actually some money that the, the fire department already had that they were going to put towards this to fix some of the siding and everything, because that didn't fall under our insurance. That was secondary to that. Um, so they put it out the bid, including the, uh, the damage that was done by my operator, as well as damage just from the bad material and weather and everything else. Uh, and we got, we got one bid, I believe. Um, which we knew we were going to get because he was the only one that showed up for the um, the pre-bid meeting and everything. So, um, see, so there's a um, under the there's a letter in here that outlines how this is going to be funded. Um, looks like the total bid was twenty six thousand seven hundred, and part of that will come from our insurance, and part of that will come from uh, our copay, and part from what the fire department has. For their part so kind of breakdown so um the league um insurance is covering you know almost half of the or, i'm sorry you know covering almost a third of the the um, and then there's a deductible the re budgeted repair line we had we had budgeted there's fifteen thousand in there is it is this work that's going to be done after July 1st or before July 1st? Um, because I was confused on one of the uh, that I don't know. Money I wasn't. Uh, so was yeah, I wasn't totally involved in this bid process, so okay. this was Teresa and David. Oh, but yeah. well, what does it say here? Um, but the work to be started completed between May 6, 2019, and June 30th of 2019. 
So it's in this fiscal year. <clears throat> and we had that, we had a line item in the budget, 15,000 for that? Well, they have the, the, so the fire department has a fund that they, it's a, it's a independent fund, if you will. And they're taking some of that to do the, not the repairs from the damage, but the additional repairs that they're asking for. Is that what you're asking me? I'm just confused on the budget. Yeah, they had, they had a line item in the budget. Yeah, for, for building, repair. that'll be part of it. Like yeah, my understanding. I looked at that, they beat through that. Too. Well, yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering if they have that money left. I guess I don't have the figures in front of you. Well, they have they have all the building repair money that was budgeted for this year. They, as far as I know, they haven't spent any of that or very little of that. So they would do, they're going to use it. My understanding is they were using that, and they're going to use some of this this other fund that they have, this, this independent fund, to pay for part of this. And then we are paying. Is that their own? Is that like their own? Yeah, it's like a tr it's a trust. Us. Yeah. And all that. I don't know what it's called, but it's kind of a, their own trust that they have. It's a, it's like a firefighter retirement or something trust thing. Hmm. Who's that managed by? Aldra Getty, the do chief. We not, do, We're involved we, with it. We're involved with it. Do we get annual reports on? The uh, I'm sure we can. Stuff? I'm sure we could. So Maybe something we want to monitor. But so I, I guess the only question mark I had here was I just um, I didn't have time to look through our budget from last year to see what we had, but I could have sworn when I was looking through some of our projected budgets to get to the end of the year that there was some money that was set aside in there, but it looked like they had already used a portion of that money, so I didn't know if they really have 15000 there to put towards it. Because I know we didn't budget anything in this next not the next year's. Right. And I remember the previous year budget, we had budgeted a total. Uh, it might have been 15, but I, I, I know they've used it for something else. Well, they had they had the, the, the heater that they worked on, you know, the tank. Yeah. I thought that came out last year, though. I think it was last year. Um, I, can, I mean, I can get you guys some more clarification on it. I, again, uh, I... When do they have to have this awarded by so they can start work? It looks like before our next meeting. Yeah. He's meeting on May 6th. Uh, I mean, we're not going to spend money that we don't have. We're watching every cent that we have. And this has been Teresa and, and David's baby, but um, if there was any a likelihood that we were going to overspend a budget item, we're not, we wouldn't do that. Is that the one she sent us? This is back. have given us um, the most recent um, projected one and uh, I know they had used a portion of that money already so I guess what I'm looking at is that they're well, I, probably looking for <coughs> some money that you know they were going to use some of the money from that other fund that they have to fund the repairs of the building wasn't there an additional line item that was approved at the town meeting last year for well, some work I think that was for the do. tank. I think that. Was no, well, that was for the building. It was from some of this building. Yeah, some of this building maintenance. It was, building building. Building. So it was an, an additional line on it. Yeah. Um, let me just get there real quick. I know I could probably find it and give it a Yeah, I just got to bring up our budget real quick. And anyway, you don't have to uh, award this until uh, after May 6th, anyways, according to what they've got on the bottom paragraph here. Well, Wouldn't have to <coughs> recommend a motion awarding the bid. Pending. Yeah, pending the meeting with 
updated. So we don't have to award that till our next meeting. Teresa's uh, email come through when she sends it. Financial. Bethel Finance. Bethel Finance. Here it is. Okay, as of March, <coughs> spent 2000 about 10 5 for apparatus repairs and maintenance. Uh, facility, ma facility maintenance had a $15,000. Uh, budget and we've spent 2300 of that. This is as of three, what was the 311, something like that. Three six, as of three six. There's something here called facility maintenance of 15,000. Right. And this was as of March 7th when Therese sent this to me. As of March 6th, they had already used, yeah, $2,400 of it. So we're assuming that the 2,400 that they're short, they're going to use through their the bereavement fund or whatever it's called, stuff, whatever it's called. What the sounds of it is. I mean, I mean as long as the that's what I was told. As long as the numbers come out correctly and we're not over, then I think we're good. And I don't imagine that Therese would overspend any budget items at all. Um, but I, I can get you more clarification. I just don't and have. And then it. the gentleman that's doing the work, I did see that there was some. Uh, he did have some recommendations. Uh, of course. These jobs always worry me a little bit when they're lump sum job and then all of a sudden they get into something they didn't anticipate. Um, I already talked to the adjuster. Order. The adjuster said if that happens because he didn't take the walls down, so if that happens, just contact him and he'll change it. And we'll get we'll find we'll get more of our insurance. So we're, we're on yeah, so if the seal plate's broken or something like that and they find that out because he could, he didn't take the wall down. So if something is, is back there that he didn't he didn't initially think was that way. He said to call him back and he'll come back in and do another adjustment to it. So it'd be covered at least partially if we found something that was. Well, we've already made our, we've already met our deductible thing. Yeah, the deductible is $1,000. So anything in addition should be covered. Well, it's covered, it's covered partially. We're not covered 100%. Um, well, I guess if it's that damage, if it can be attributed to that damage, I guess it would be, yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. But he said, just give him a call. He'll come back out and take a look. I mean, it's kind of too bad we didn't get more than one bid, but. Yeah. You know, we advertised like we're, we were supposed to. And, right. um, yeah. Uh, David Aldrighetti knows who this guy is, and he's going to be the clerk of the works, which will help us save a little money, and, um, and he knows buildings. So, uh, so Lindley, he's confident were, in the. While you were out, mm -hmm. it, it appears that they. It was 15000 that was set aside. They used about $2,400 of that to date. So okay. it sounds like they're going to offset the money they've used with some of their collection money. Gotcha. Um, so it appears that the numbers will work out. The other question that we had, we were just talking about, was what happens if, you know, we get into it and find out it's going to cost $10,000 more, you know, um, which Greg was talking about. He's already talked to the leagues. The adjuster. And that they would readjust things as needed. So. Okay. Uh, 
So, I, um, if there's no further discussion at the board level, um, I would entertain a motion to accept a bid from Randall Hoyt um, to do the work um, on the fire station. Don't move. Well, pending a meeting with Dave on May 6th. Right. Yeah. So move. Second. Okay. So we have a. Did you get that? Pending a meeting on May 6th. He recused okay. himself. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So pending the uh, meeting. And cemetery bids. So just uh, bid tabs. Uh, went out to bid on the cemetery maintenance, hoping to save some money, and came back that it, the people we've been using for a long time at Sness Ground um, were the were the fairest and the lowest bid. So we are, have retained their services for the next three years um, in a contract. So kind of keep status quo on that one. But at least we know we're getting a fair price. Do you need anything from us on this one? Nothing. How can you, I guess my question when I was reading that is, why the hour is great, but if Joe takes 14 hours and mm -hmm. Fred takes four hours, mm -hmm. but he's two hours an hour more, he's the better deal. Because we had given them a, a amount of hours okay. per week. So that was part of the Yes. There was kind of a, <laughs> not a threshold, but a cap, if you will. Okay. And then they bet it on that, based okay. on that. Because you're right, it could technically only take them yeah. an hour. It could take somebody twice yeah. as long as the other person. Right. Right. Yeah. Those guys don't take long. He's not on our Well, those high-tech lawnmowers now, it shouldn't take very long. Zero <laughs> turn. and. It's hard to zero turn around <laughs> in the cemetery, though. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they use that big moor, and they moor an awful lot of our cemetery with that big moor. I don't yeah, know how yeah. they do it. Yeah. All right, any further discussion on the cemetery bids? And uh, Paul, if you want to update us with the oh, just, Two Rivers breakfast? Yeah, just a quick thing, thing man. We've got, we got a lot of stuff going on, so I don't want to take up a lot of time. But um, again, the, the big topic of discussion was uh, there were uh, representatives there from all the surrounding towns, Chelsea, Wellington, Brookfield. Um, and they all, you know, went, they all had the similar type stories. And, uh, you know, when you go to these things, I didn't know anything about Twin Rivers and what our relationship with them was. And it, this, there's more information that you could possibly put into a three or four hour period. They're involved in all aspects of municipal government. Specifically, though, dealing with highways and roads, um, uh, waste, uh, water waste treatment. Um, they uh, deal with regional housing deal with the work of the planning commissions uh, with all the different aspects there, economic development grants. Um, there's, there's a new Northern Borders Regional Commission that, that has uh, grants that, that we can apply for that deal with specific things like town garages, uh, recreational trails, um, just amazing stuff. Brown, uh, the brownfield investigation, if you've got any buried tanks or any kind of contamination issues, they bring in consultants to be able to deal with that. They speak FEMA, so they have all the forms and, uh, and can assist in preparing the kind of things that, you, that you're going through. Uh, maps, big maps, little maps, any kind of maps that we need. Uh, they get involved in land use hearings with the planning commissions. Um, flood, mit uh, flood mitigation, flood management, um, solar fields, if you want to put a solar field in the town, uh, they get involved in that. Um, access permits for or reclassifying roads. There's all sorts of things that they're involved in. And, and, and to be honest with you, I'm amazed that, that any one person can know all the stuff. You know, like somebody in your office 
you know, would know all these things that VLTC offers and that, and that Two Rivers offers. We pay, you know, we pay a lot of money to be involved with these organizations, and, and um, so it's really good that we you know, take advantage of the, of the consultants and the, and the information that they, they can give. They gave me a list, I'm going to pass along to Greg, is um, it's like 13 or 14 different grants that are available for us to take a look at on a yearly basis. And it's everything from water quality, uh, town bridges and paving, um, you know, municipal uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities, municipal sidewalk repair, all this kind of stuff. And there's a whole list of them. And, uh, some of them, anything to do with road repair, culverts, or whatnot, is uh, in kind match. Some of the and some of these 50, 50, 80, 20, but it's just um, a lot of information to have at our disposal for the fees that we that we pay to join. Uh, one thing that came up, they have a, a transportation advisory committee that meets every quarter to discuss regional, local, and regional transportation changes, uh, V-Trans, uh, Stagecoach, uh, planning, things like that. Now we have our representative on that, on that TAC committee is Bill Hall. And he's been continuing to go to the meetings, but I don't know as we've been getting any kind of feedback uh, as far as any of these programs that are available. So we might want to take a look at doing something different there. And Carl's also the commissioner, right? Right. Carl is um, our representative. The planning, our yeah. representative. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know if we, we may want to just look at uh, something because we're not getting any of that feedback. And I right. and I spoke to Kelly about getting signed on to the newsletter. We have a regular newsletter. Um, for example, this breakfast, you know, I, I saw this in the paper, and usually there's a notification that comes from the, through the through the newsletter or through other notification that these events are happening. So I want to make sure that we get those notifications in that newsletter. Well, maybe maybe you could reach out to Bill and maybe just establish a time that he could come in and maybe it's quarterly or twice a year and just sit down and let us know what's going on at, you know, on the Transportation yeah. Advisory Committee at you know, Two Rivers. And I don't know if it's one of those deals where you have to be involved in the town government in order to be on. No, I don't think you know, no. like that. I know someone in VLTC, I think it's maybe. But anyway, um, yeah, so we get some feedback because they they go they deal with local, state, and even federal legislation on these projects that are being done. Um, they have representatives hanging around Montpelier all the time, um, looking to push, Thank you. push uh, legislation through. Uh, very informative. And they will come in and do a 10-minute dog and pony show for the select board, just to go over uh, any questions we have or just to give a general overview of what we're paying for. So. Any further discussion on Two Rivers? All right. Select board meeting minutes from April 8th. Anybody see anything? Or not a, entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes of April 8th? So move. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. And then the other thing, uh, at least the only other thing I had in my packet was the um, Bethany Town Hall Committee had their um, follow-up meeting for town meeting day. Did any other business come before the board that anybody wanted to add tonight before we jump into executive session? I wanted to ask a question about. I got pummeled today about uh, about the uh, if there was or not, or if there was, it wasn't being enforced. An ordinance for junk. No, we have no nuisance ordinance for junk. We do have so there is a state statute that talks about junk yards, 
which is more of a car. That, that I know. Yeah. We, I was pummeled by these people. It, so, you know, right, right at the top of Richard is it's if it's not a if, if it's well so that maybe if it's a um a, a hazard public safety hazard then it would go to the public safety officer sit next to you or the other one well that's what i told them <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if it's yeah. if it's just <laughs> junk in the yard like you know laying you stuff can talk to me when i'm driving a constable car right right just stuff laying around <laughs> and then no we haven't got it at, a nuisance ordinance for that. No, because it, it seems like every year, just about springtime, usually is the yeah. we'll get a this few known properties throughout the community that we get you know several complaints on, but we I don't we've never have gone anywhere with that. Not a public health issue. Public health is what I meant to say. I think it's a safety and we don't public health issue. Yeah. Any ordinance in regards to lots of I call this Isn't there a state law that you can only have X number of unregistered vehicles. Yeah, then it, it then it goes falls under like the junkyards and, right. and unkept vehicles, or there's all, all sorts of different terms, but it all really it talks about vehicles or health. It doesn't say if you've got you know a bunch of wood piled in front of your house, it's on the it's all over the place, and it's yeah, it's okay. Unless Match. we had a nuisance ordinance. Right. Yeah. Match. Yeah. <laughs> Based on that. Mm. Yep, we can go around and pick up tires all over the back roads where people just dump them off on green up day. Yeah. Well, we can use them to make a nice fence like they have up here on church. Yeah, paint, paint them gold. Yeah, painted them gold and everything. We can anything, use them for ditch fill. Anything else what come it? before the board tonight? Thank you, thank you. All right, I'll entertain a motion to enter executive session to talk about personnel matters. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. 